So I'm now at section three of this uh, third lecture on peace, which I've called Who Will Walk? And this, the issue, or the question here is, who is going to walk away? Partly who's going to walk away and what are, they, what are their plans? Because uh, <clears throat> sort of Le Guin kind of has them walking off into this shadowy darkness where it's unclear, it's clear that she believes in that, but at the same time, or it's clear that her narrator believes in that because that's the way the story is, is set up. But my own experience of being lucky enough to have, say, <clears throat> been around here in MIT <clears throat> from the early days is that many, many people will walk away. Uh, I've seen it. Um, I've been enormously impressed and ashamed <clears throat> to see the courage that so many of you have. The people who are always complaining about kids these days, this has been going on as long as I've been teaching. Um, I, started, I started teaching in 1991, I think it was. And uh, people were always like, oh, kids these days. I'm like, oh, you know, actually, I don't have any complaints. Um, <laughs> the people I worked with have been, have been really interesting people who have been engaged and, and um, take things seriously. You know, they, they, sure, you always have people who are like, oh, what am I doing here? You know, I'd rather be, <clears throat> smoke, you know, I'd rather be sailing, as they used to say, a bumper sticker. Um, and people are always talking about how much literacy has fallen and how we're going to social network hell. And it's always something, you know, there's always some reason why the world is going to hell. But my experience with the issue of who finds it acceptable to live this way is that people look for and find not just ways out, but ways to resist. And remember that this <clears throat> we are facing here, as powerful as Amala's is, it's powerful because it's a false dilemma. It is itself a fallacy. And so it's very, it can be very convincing and it can make you, you know, have terrible pangs of guilt. Um, <clears throat> as if somehow by staying, you are responsible for the, the person who is suffering. Well, to some extent that's true. Um, we are responsible for each other and for each other's suffering and for each other's well-being. But there's a certain point at which the network is too big. It's like, no, actually, I... I, I didn't know about that. Not only did I not know about it, but um, I, if I did know about it, now that you're telling me I know about it, I, I can't see a way to affect it. Because if I, if I vote differently, it's not going to make a difference. Um, I would have to be a different person. I would have to be somehow in charge of this corporation to make this change. And I, like, how's that going to happen? So many have listened to things that I've said and not only disagreed with me along the way of course but felt that I was nuts and this is all too idealistic and that uh, this is the way things have always been and so on and I'm really used to that I mean I'm sure that you have all heard this kind of thing you know you start your startup and somebody says oh you know here they go again and you know or you're at Thanksgiving Thanksgiving seems to be a real hot spot <laughs> because people are like, you know they come home and they're still charged up they still have enough energy it's early in term first term and they get home and they're like, well, I've been reading, blah, 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 you know, and then they get a mm, knock down, drag out fight with somebody at the Thanksgiving, over the Thanksgiving meal. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's better <laughs> not to go home. Maybe go home the day after Thanksgiving or go home the day before and then, you know, go out and uh, visit with a friend and uh, stay in a hotel somewhere and then go back, you know, the day after. Um, so I'm, I'm not trying to mess with anybody's head. People must make their own decisions. They must choose for themselves. It is, you, you know, you should know from the discussions of propaganda that when you lie to people, um, the, the bottom line is no good will come of it. Um, not if you honestly want change. You can make people do what you want, um, but it takes steady, constant, ongoing labor. I mean, it will take everything you've got. So I've asked only here that you consider the deal you're being offered and consider whether when you look inside, basically at sort of how you know what you know and what do you know, um, whether what you see f or what you feel really feels right. Um, not necessarily happy, because uh, happy is one of those, eh, I don't know. Happy comes and goes. 
sad comes and goes, you know, angry comes and goes, if you let it. And there's a lot of way, but rightness, you know, justice. Justice here, I think justness, I guess is the way, is, is the word I should be using. So that there may also be joy, absolutely. Um, your life doesn't have to be one of servitude, um, if that's how you see things. We are very much fixated on our standard of living, but not, and this is something we began talking about, uh, I mean, this is something that I sort of grew up with as a teen, not our standard of life. Um, at the moment, only one country in the world, as far as I know, there may be another one, um, actually measures its citizens' happiness and they actually have a gross national happiness index, and that's the country of Bhutan. So you get to choose what you work for. And so when I talk about who will walk, it's much more complex than that. And that's why this story is useful, because it says it presents this little problem, which I then am saying to you basically is um, it's a fake. And so you got to, it's a starter. It's a, it's a place to start because you get it's it's there it's designed to, to upset you and that's good right that's the point about upsetting non-reassuring narratives okay 